Hello, buzzers. We are so excited to welcome you to a brand new season of The Buzz. I am your host, Melicia Johnson. And I'm your host, JT Arose. So get ready because The Buzz is coming at you live right now. Yes. Every week, we'll highlight three of the biggest pop culture stories this week on our countdown. So without further ado, let's get into our third spot on the countdown. Yes, if you're an avid Snapchat user, I'm sure you've noticed a new update. It separates your everyday friends that you snap into one section of the app, and then the Discover page features content from publishers, influencers, and popular stories from people in the community. Back in November, CEO Evan Spiegel gave us a preview of what users could expect. Let's check it out. Today we're making Snapchat more personal. One of the complaints we've heard about social media is that photos and videos from your friends are mixed in with content from publishers and creators and influencers. But your friends aren't content, they're relationships. That's why today we're separating the social from the media and reorganizing Snapchat around your relationships to make it more personal. Interesting. So JT, do you think this new update on Snapchat adds to the pressure that so many young people feel to be popular or to be perfect on social media? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I know everyone's talking about the update and like, you know, everyone thinks it sucks. But I think the real story is that, you know, people who have popular stories um, in the community get to be side by side by celebrities like Kim Kardashian or like Chrissy Teigen or all these big publishers and it just adds to the pressure of like what can I do to get onto the discovery page like mm -hmm. you're side by side with people who literally make all this money and like look great all the time so I think it can definitely feed into secure insecurities I don't know if it's necessarily going to cause that but I know I have a fear that like if I'm not a popular story if I'm not selected to be on the discovery page and like is my story even meaningful? Is it worth anything? So. Well, I think the problem is on social media, you have so many people looking for love in the wrong places and looking for validation through likes and comments. Totally and it's just it's very important to be mindful with your use of social media and to just have fun with it. You know, don't compare yourself to the next person. Exactly. Just do you. <laughs> exactly. So we have more on people's reaction to the update and how to fix it if you're mad about it later on in the show. But coming in at number two on our countdown, Valentine's Day is quickly approaching and just this week alone, it seems like love is in the air for many of our favorite celebrity couples. So let's fill you in on who will for sure be cozying it up this V-Day. Idris Elba is definitely going to be having an amazing Valentine's Day. The actor and his girlfriend, Sabrina Dow, are engaged. Elba popped the question on stage to the former Miss Vancouver before the debut of his movie, Yardy. According to People, the couple met and fell in love while he was filming a movie in Canada. And then our favorite funny girl, Amy Schumer, is officially off the market. Schumer confirmed that she has a new bae after she posted an Instagram of her smooching her chef, Chris Fisher. The pic was taken in a photo booth at Ellen DeGeneres' 60th birthday. And finally, photos have surfaced of former Fifth, Har former Fifth Harmony singer Camila Cabello showing dating expert Matthew Hussey some PDA in Mexico. Now, Cabello is actually 10 years younger than Hussey, but this couple makes age look like nothing but a number. Ooh, if I was dating a <laughs> dating coach, yeah. I feel like my relationship would be perfect. I would hope so. Maybe it would be psychoanalyzed a lot. I don't know. But, I mean, what does this all this love and relationship news tell us? Is love in Hollywood not dead after all? No, I don't think love can ever die. That's true. I mean, yeah, it's a beautiful thing to see all of these celebrities in love. Yeah. You know, Valentine's Day is a big day yeah. for relationships. But if you aren't in a relationship, you can always have a Galentine. Yeah. Or, you know, show some self-love to yourself. Exactly. Self-love is always great. Yes. Well, this year I will not be celebrating Valentine's because I'm unfortunately single as what? That's not unfortunate, girl. <laughs> but I did want to ask you something because I am celebrating Valentine's Day. Will you... Be my Galentine, Melicia. Oh, this is so sweet. <laughs> yes. I feel like I should have got you something okay. now. You can give me something for my birthday. Okay. I'll, I'll remember. Oh, <laughs> chocolate. Yes, Girl, I should get you chocolate because I, I know you love chocolate. So, Thank anyway. You. This is so sweet. Yes. yes. Guys, celebrate Galentine's Day if you can. <laughs> now, switching over to a less lovey dubby topic for our number one story. I know my Sex in the City fans out there were broken hearted, just as I was when you found out that Carrie Bradshaw and Samantha Jones were not best friends in real life. As a matter of fact, they're not even friends. Sarah Jessica Parker, who plays Carrie, and Kim Cattrall, who plays Samantha, have been very public about their feud with each other. Cattrall described Parker as a mean girl on the set of Sex in the City. 
Recently, Katra announced her brother passed away in an Instagram post, and she thanked everyone for their love and support, but was furious when Parker commented and gave her condolences. The actress responded to Parker in another Instagram post, stating, quote, I don't need your love or support at this tragic time, end quote. She then went on to caption the post, quote, Stop exploiting our tragedy to restore your nice girl persona, end Ooh, quote. Ooh, yikes. Petty. Petty, yikes, petty, yikes, petty. yikes, yikes, yikes. How do you feel about this, especially at a time right now with the Time's Up and the Me Too movement going yeah. on? Women need to support other women. That's what I was thinking. I mean, social media has literally been saying, hashtag Me Too, hashtag Time's Up, you know, like, let's raise our fellow, like, women and sisters up. And the fact that these grown women, like, we know so much about their beef, like, I shouldn't know that much. Like, mm -hmm. self-disclosure is really important and key yeah. in 2018. So. Well, not getting along on or off the set is not a new thing in Hollywood. Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall's beef, has that changed the way that you view the show? I, I think it definitely has. I mean, they didn't, they didn't let Sex and the City rest in peace. Like, I know that show was done. I know they did the movies. And, like, I just wanted it to go in peace. And I feel like there are these evil women just, like, oh, making it, like, just beating it to death. Like, if Kim can send her haters Valentine's Day gifts, like, these two can definitely patch things up. So yeah. support well, I, each yeah, other. Yeah, I definitely think it's important for women to support other women. Yeah. So I'm going to be a woman who supports another woman and toss it over to my girl, Allegra Gutierrez, who has more on the details of Snapchat's latest update. Welcome to our first installment of Monday Minute with me, Allegra Gutierrez. Everyone is buzzing about the new Snapchat update because people seem to hate it. Many Snapchatters are complaining that the new layout is confusing and hard to use. Basically, we're all panicking. And of course, Twitter has some very strong words for Snapchat. User Amber Frank tweeted, the new Snapchat update is more confusing than trying to turn on your friend's shower. Kylie Jenner even tweeted, mm, just saw the new ch Snapchat update. I don't know how I feel about it. What do you guys think? User Isaac Sabobni even tweeted a DM conversation with Snapchat where they said if the tweet got 50,000 retweets, they would undo the update. Too bad it was fake because the tweet got over 1.3 million retweets. And as you will probably already know, your friends' stories and conversations are now together under the friends tab. The only thing worse than Chrissy Teigen's story not being next to my best friends is that the stories aren't even chronological anymore. Now you'll have to go to the Discover page to find Chrissy Teigen's funny stories along with all the other celebs. Luckily, Twitter is teaching us how to get the old Snapchat back. First, delete the app, then turn off automatic updates in your settings, re-download Snapchat, hit the forgot password button, choose to reset via phone, then change your password. And finally, log back in and enjoy your chronological snaps. Thank you, Twitter. That's all for this week's Monday Minute. Let's toss it over to Katya, who's going to tell us what the tea is this week. Thank you, Allegra. Hello, I'm Katya Jordan, and welcome to What's the Tea? Award-winning music producer Quincy Jones has proved that he has no filter when it comes to gossiping about his famous friends, or maybe I should say his foes. In an interview with Vulture magazine, Jones candidly discussed the late actor Marlon Brando's love life, Michael Jackson allegedly still in songs, and his fling with Ivanka Trump. When discussing Brando's charming personality, Jones claimed Brando had sexual relations with comedian Richard Pryor, singer Marvin Gaye, and actor James Baldwin. Richard Pryor's daughter, Rain Pryor, denied these accusations and defended her late father in a Facebook post. She said Jones is losing his mind and decided to garner publicity with himself with a sensationalized interview. She then said Daddy did not have relations with Marlon Brando. When Jones was asked about his close working relationship with Michael Jackson, Jones spilled all the tea when he said MJ stole the beats to make some of his biggest songs, including his hit song, Billie Jean. The interview continued to be a thriller when the 84-year-old continued on with his rants and spoke on an alleged fling he had with President Trump's eldest daughter, Ivanka Trump, 12 years ago. Surprisingly, President Trump hasn't responded via Twitter about these comments. Well, I provided you with some of the facts, but here's no, the sugar with no tea. Um, absolutely not, um, Quincy Jones. You definitely need to put all of this aside and stop being so messy. You're too old for all of this. Now, uh, our segment host, Amir MK, went, on, went out on campus to see who has been keeping up with latest pop culture news. Let's see if he managed to fool anyone with his fake news headlines.
Everyone's talking about it. U.S. Olympics team brought in the first gold medal for dog sledding after beating Canada's 12-year streak. How do you feel about that? feel great about that. My family's big on the Olympics and sports, so um, I bet they're, they're super happy about that. I think it's pretty cool to beat would be Canada. Do you like dog sledding? No. Zach, what do you think? Zach, what do you think? Valentine's Day is coming up, and Melania is giving Trump a baby lion. How do you feel about that? That's stupid. It's great for the lion. I feel like that's an irresponsible move, just because it's a very controversial subject, and being the president of the United States, it's not a good look for you. It's kind of cool, I guess. Baby lion, I would love to have a baby lion. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. I think that's a wonderful idea. Well, I think she needs a bigger lion than that. What would you give Trump? Um, I would give him probably like a couple history books. And a better wig? How about a new wig? Impeachment papers. I definitely want a petition to get dog sledding into the Olympics. It would definitely be the cutest event by far. <laughs> well, we're so happy to welcome our first live guests of the season. Today, I'm joined by Sarah Castle and Buck Andrews, the hosts and founders of Pop is So Deep, which is a weekly show that proves just how complex popular songs really are. They're also seniors here at USC. Sarah is studying at the Iovine Academy, and Buck is an Annenberg student studying communications. The show started as a podcast, and now it's a Facebook Live show. So tell me a little bit about Pop is So Deep, what it is, and how it got started. So we love pop culture so much, and we always thought that pop music was super interesting, and why not take 20 minutes every week to analyze it and really get in there, see all the lyrics, see if it's pointing out anything that the public eye can't necessarily see. We're trying to extract all of it. It's all the cool. data. I mean, yeah. we've always been friends and we want an excuse to work together and basically just get in front of the camera and talk. Well, let's take a look at a little taste of their work. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. But this, this song, Getaway Car, actually, Buck and I, in all seriousness, we really love this song. So much. It kind of, like, brings both aisles together. Yeah, it's very, it's unifying. We, we never see eye to eye. And, never. On this song, we tended to. So the podcast has been on for two seasons now. What's been your favorite episode so far? That's a hard one. They're all so perfect and good. <laughs> um, we are very, we love Lady Gaga, and that's one of our earlier episodes, but we were both so passionate about the topic. I think we came up with a theory that Lady Gaga was actually a dolphin, and that was very successful for us, yeah. All right, and <laughs> so you're having a special live show this Wednesday for Valentine's Day. Yes. Do you uh, notice a difference between a normal show and a live studio audience show? Yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of a difference for sure. Energy-wise, we're hyped off Way the crowd. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, right? I prefer it. I mean, like, I always perform better. I know Buck and I, like, feed off that. Yeah. So we're excited. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to tune in to this special Valentine's Day episode of Pop is So Deep, check out their Facebook Live show at 9 p.m. this Wednesday. <laughs> Well, I know I am so excited to catch that Valentine's Day special. I am such a huge fan of those two, and I love their like Facebook live show. It's so funny. Who would have ever thought that Lady Gaga was a dolphin? Yes, and that pop is so deep, <laughs> obviously. Uh, well, unfortunately, that is it for our first episode of the new year. I really enjoyed co-hosting with you. It's I been so much fun. With you too. And I can tell this is going to be a great season of The Buzz. Yes, we cannot wait to bring you guys all the pop culture news, so make sure you stay tuned, and make sure you guys comment below and tweet at USC The Buzz to let us know your thoughts on today's top stories. And since next week is President's Day, be sure to tune in on February 26th to catch the next episode of The Buzz. But until then, buzzers, keep checking us out on social media for the latest pop culture news. I am Melicia Johnson. And I'm JT Arose. Hope you all have a happy Valentine's Day and President's Day. Yes. We'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for watching The Thanks Buzz. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>